welcome back to Lock and Load Game Fest 2015 here in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, I'm Ed Burrell, Privateer Press Creative Director. Yeah, I'm Will Hungerford, Organized Play and Volunteer Coordinator. And we are here to do a War Machine and Hordes Iron Exhibition. This is so exciting. Um, yeah, so for the first time right now, we're just going to broadcast some Iron Arena games between just some more casual 35-point games between a couple people participating in the Iron Arena, which you can see back here behind us yeah. is, is full of awesome terrain, awesome armies, and awesome, awesome miniatures. We're really flipping the script. Like, you know, yesterday we had the awesome Iron Gauntlet, like top-end competitive matches. And to do something we've just never done before, we raffled off some, some chances for people to be on the live stream from Iron arena games and just have some fun and show really the opposite end of the thing and you know that that full spectrum of the experience you can get at lock and load uh so our two players oh sorry we'll let mr hunger for talk about our scenario yeah absolutely so these two guys are gonna be playing close quarters um you know even though this is a casual game they're gonna play with this one of the steamroller scenarios so that they can uh, keep the game timed and, and and moving along uh this one's very simple it's got kill box so you got to be always moving forward and, and keeping your caster away from the very edges if uh they dominate the friendly flag the one on their side they'll get one control point uh controlling the enemy flag will get them one control point dominating it will get them two control points and the first player to five wins of course caster kill is always an option and our two players uh, over on the left, you've got Michael Mitchell. Michael is running a 35-point uh, Fiora Protectorate of the Flame list. And so we, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about lots and lots of fire. We've got, uh, you know, uh, well, fire everywhere. It's Fiora. Come on. <laughs> yes, fire, and, fire, and, fire. And, fire. And, and she's running a Bonded Judicator, so uh, even more fire with her Warjack Bond giving all of those ranged attacks. Um, the fire continuous effect. She's, he's also running a Vanquisher. Uh, and then it looks like we've got a Vassal Mechanic solo with uh, Orin Midwinter to give a little null magic, which is really going to play well against the army he's facing off against. It's going to be brutal. Um, we've got Gorman DeWolf, uh, Rogue Alchemist. Um, plenty of great anti-Warjack uh, goods there. Um, we've got a Reclaimer. He's going to reclaim things. Mm -hmm. Um, souls, maybe some fire. Who maybe knows? some fire, yes. Um, temple Flame Guard, they're going to guard the flame. And then the Officer and Standard Bearer to make sure that they're guarding the flame appropriately. Sure, sure. And one thing I want to note is that this is a, a, a just a fun, casual game. There's, there's no judge at this table, right? Uh, so if the players make any mistakes, if there's any sort of little question, you see right now they're, they're looking at the clock, that's totally okay. If these guys are just going to resolve any disputes they have um, between themselves and just have a fun friendly game right the, 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 this this really is a, a, a casual game so yeah. um you know it, it basically it's going to be as technical as the two of them decide that it needs yeah to be. they're going to play to the best ability and play a clean game but you know we're just letting anybody know if you, you notice a mistake and no one's correcting what happened it's okay right it happens absolutely so, uh andy welton let's look at his list he's running adeptus ron and in his battle group he's got discordia and the phoenix so that arc node's hopefully gonna get some work done between the choir of menoth and uh you know well no magic won't stop it because it only stops casting but not channeling right so there's some possibilities there he's got a pair of mage hunter assassins two arcanists epic eris or eris two i should specify because you have three options in retribution yes. uh nail and two units of the uh, house shield battle mages which those will definitely be affected by no magic depending on how uh michael sets up that it, it, if I had a hunch um, mr. midwinter is going to be an early target for for Andy yes yes I would I, I imagine so Andy as many of you know is a part of the crippled system podcast and is basically one of the, the guys that made who's the boss of format he is the guy that made who's the boss of format so if you've ever enjoyed that format you might be rooting for Andy right now and uh, it looks like Andy is all deployed um, so uh, Michael is continuing his his regular deployment yeah. deployment he's already pre-deployed his judicator um and just setting some stuff out if um we, can we get a close-up of uh the shot of andy's army because i really love the paint job on on andy's uh retribution i'm not sure if we have a hand cam on this oh we may not have a hand so, cam right, okay remember okay uh, if we do we may not but if we do maybe the cameraman can take a shot of it because man those things look awesome there we go. Apparently uh, we do. It's not seat of your pants Sunday like we may be anticipating. No, no, I thought we Will did. But look at the Phoenix. <laughs> oh, it, it could also be a function of Will Schick learning the controller and how to switch out from, from scene to scene. Wow. Just he's doing throw, a great job. Throw, throw him under the bus right there on the live he's, stream he, like that. He's doing wonderful. That, he was doing so good with, um, we, uh, with commentary on me yesterday. Or what? I can't talk anymore. I'm done. I'm done. He's, he, he, he I'm gets, brain fried from yesterday, man. I did three rounds of commentary. Clearly I can't say anything right, so I'm just done. But I apologize to everyone watching right now. You're just going to deal with this. But for those of you um, 
just joining us. So we're here at Lock and Load, and uh, today is day three. We've got the closing ceremonies going on uh, later this evening. Um, anybody know if we're live streaming those closing ceremonies? Sounds like we're not. Um, but it's going to you know, wrap up with a bang like we, like we love to do. The hangouts are in full swing, and everybody's gone. All right, looks like we got the handshake. And it is time to get this game rolling. So Andy is ADing, getting Eris 2 up there, putting his Mage Hunter Assassins up, you know, just getting all those forward forces. Uh, apparently behind that obstruction, he's terrified of, well, I guess he's terrified of all the AoEs. That makes sense. <laughs> he's really going to run around those forests for a little bit, get on the hill. Elves are highly flammable. Look at that beard. It is magnificent. I have known Andy for quite some time now. It has not always been so gray. Oh, really? Uh, Andy's only 23 years old. So, I mean, he's had a rough life. Would it mean he was about 12 when I met him the first time? Wow. So Ron's going to keep all the focus, looks like. I'm not giving out to the Jacks. Probably because uh, those Arcanists are just going to power boost it, right? Right. And here come the, the Battle Mages. Man, they're going to have a hard time doing anything this game. They may have to go straight punch mode. Could be. I mean, Andy's confirming some threat ranges with Michael uh, on the... Uh, the Judicator and the Vanquisher. So we have a number of solos running over to the forest. Sure. Nail, Eris, and a Mage Hunter Assassin. I'm trying to figure out what model that was that ran first that's that really close to the flag. I am also, because it looks like a battle mage. It that looks like a magister, but uh, I don't know that one of those is in his list. He, he might not He may have made some last minute. Down. No, no. He, it's a 35-point game. He may have made some last-minute changes that I'm not aware of. Yeah, that's definitely a Magister. Yes, it is. Things get crazy here on Sundays. Yeah. Well, you know, Andy, we, we just sort of, he won the raffle. It was all really fast-paced, so it just could be a, a quick, honest mistake. And yep. maybe we can get word over to that table and, and let him know, hey, is that Magister there? <laughs> all right, got another Magister running. Battle Mages are running. There's two Magisters. Yes, we're the here. The deforestation of the Iron yes, Kingdoms continues. I keep forgetting you guys can't hear the mics on the players, so I'm making jokes based on the things that they say, and they'll make no sense to you, and I'll just look like a crazy person, but... I can live with that. Yeah. It looks like Andy's about to wrap up his turn. Yeah, well, let's see if we can do something with the magic of, of live stream. Hey, can we, can we get word to the cameraman to ask Andy if those magisters are supposed to be in his army? Let's see if we can have the magic of, li of live stream happen. A 
the, the magic the magic of live stream is happening right now, ladies and gentlemen. And, and there the they magisters go. have both exploded. <laughs> yes. I will judge through I will judge through this monitor. <laughs> we love you, Andy. Yeah, that would Honest mistake on Andy's part. They're, they're nobody all, they're nobody all, give him any trouble over that. They're all chuckling on the far end of the mic. Yeah. All right, guys. So, sorry for that little momentary lapse in talking. We were just getting things handled after uh, I had sent my voice through the monitor and across into their table. So, we're back on. Let's see here. Looks like Mike's taking his turn. You know, the Judicator got his free focus from the, the Reliquary. So, I don't think Fewer handed anything out. I'll get a better look here in a second. But right now, the Temple Flame Guard looks like they're just advancing. Going to do a shield wall here. Got the classic Protectorate paint scheme, which I am never skilled enough to actually paint because painting white is my enemy. One of your many enemies. One of my When many it comes enemies. to painting. Oh, you know me. Hey, we were talking about this with Chick the other day that I've actually started doing it and that I'm getting not horrible. No, I've seen some of the stuff you've done. It's not the worst thing. Yeah. Oh, if you'll see the, the, the Gorman that's down there towards the bottom of the screen, you saw it for just a second, you were like, what, what is that model? That is the PG exclusive Gorman to Seawolf. Both of these gentlemen are press gangers. Um, and... Since Mike brought his, his Gorman, we got a good look at it. Yes, we did. It was a, a model we gave to them as the 10th anniversary of the Press Gang as a little special something. So it looks like we've had a Temple Flame Guard advance. And shield wall. And shield wall. Yep. Uh, we were busy gabbing away during allocation. I, mean, I don't think he allocated anything. Uh, Fjord just walks up. Looks like she cast Escort, which makes sense. There's that Gorman to Seawolf. A little special model, a little exclusive model for our volunteers. Something cool we could do. Basically the same exact rules as Gorman to Wolf, in case you're wondering. He's no, functionally no different. Just a re-sculpt. Gorman likes his disguises, and he will... Yeah, why can't he be a pirate? Fit in more when he's... He's basically a crazy dude with, like, acid bombs. Pirates would hire that, right? That's right. Because we gave him a peg leg, I like to think that the regular Gorman DeWolf has a prosthetic leg. You just right, can't he just tell in his regular outfit. So I have a thing I like to do on live stream where I always pick like one solo, typically a Merc, and I just sort of figure out like their narrative of what's going on right now. And I was going to pick Gorman, but this makes complete sense for Gorman. Like Gorman working with some like religious zealots and a bunch fighting against a bunch of like you know angry elves using uh, weird technology. It, Gorman isn't phased at all, right? He's just probably talking to himself under the gas mask, running around. He doesn't care. That story the is amazing. Oh, uh, you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you're the worst. We have been harassing each other for a very long time now. Too long. All right, so it looks like we've got some Judicator action opening up. Yep. Now, that Judicator is bonded to Epic Fiora. That means all these AoEs, wherever they land, they're going to set everything on fire. So, Taking a shot at the Phoenix. Uh, we were looking for an 11 to hit, and the roll has missed. Okay. So Ron's got force field up, and that means that, he, that Andy gets to choose the direction that this deviates. So he chooses the four, but Mike rolls a one for the distance, so it still catches that. So looks like the Phoenix is going to be set on fire. I'm not sure. No, they were, it looks like they were rolling damage for the AoE. Force Field does say that the model doesn't suffer blast damage. Oh, sorry. No, it's that model doesn't suffer blast damage, so it's Ron. My bad. Look at me getting things wrong. It's another AoE being shot. So much fire landing out there. Well... Luckily, Andy's got that force field to make sure these AoEs never get close to his army, at least till the, the line of engagement gets a little bit closer. Uh, 
So we'll see that both those AoEs just, you know, drift backwards harmlessly. Thanks to the power of Force Field. Force Field's are nice. Uh, Force Field's are like the one thing Andy has that really sort of counters Mike's R plan. Right. Whereas Mike's army counters Andy's plan. It's pretty bad. Uh, Temple Flame Guard, I mean, they're going to get ripped to shreds, but everything else... And he doesn't have any great answers. So, Vanquisher just walking on up. Looks like Gorman's walking up. Probably going to pop smoke here. He, and Yup. Exact quote. I'll pop smoke. It's that, that is what Mike said. That Vassal Mechanic's just running up next to the Judicator, and uh, Mike ships the turn back to Andy. Let's see if fire goes out on the Phoenix here. It does not. I couldn't tell what that dice was, really. Yep. But no damage from the fire. So the Phoenix is burning. Just a big scary Myrmidon running across the battlefield on fire. How is that know. thing? It's called a phoenix. It it's got a thermal blade and a halo cannon that causes fire. How did? How is it not immune to fire? Well, I mean, the phoenix has to burn to be reborn. Reborn. That isn't that Imperatus's whole shtick? Is isn't Imperatus a phoenix? Yeah. You didn't answer the question, but okay, let's move on. We'll see. Andy is deep in thought, and that beard is deep in thought. Every time I see Andy, I get really happy because I'm usually in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, he's he's near there, the land um, of the cheese curd. Oh man! Every time, like when we go to the ACD distributor show, I always meet up with Andy and Nathan Hoffman, and. Uh, Usually Brian Giese and we just have endless cheese curds at the old the old fashioned. And they're so good. I never get invited. Well you never come. I know. Fire. Speaking of some cheese, Ron's trying to allocate I don't know why I said that. Fire. Like, are you drawing what are you doing? I'm are you telestrating. Draw, oh you're telestrating, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You drawing while I'm <laughs> they, talking? They, well, handed, you know they handed me this power. Well, that's because you can draw. You have artistic talent. So and that was beautifully rendered flames, you, by the way. You should use it. <clears throat> Andy's still in his, uh, his focus allocation phase here. He's still trying to figure out his plan. He's asking the defense on Epifiora. He's like, hmm, can I kill her? The answer is potentially yes. Because these battle mages under Ron's feet, they can probably pull apart some of those TFG, get out of the way, open up some clear shots, and then go for the spell assassination on Fiora, who I believe escorts up, so her arm's quite high, but we'll see. Spoiler alert. Well, let's see if Andy ah. tries to ruin this uh, live stream by having a top two assassination. Andy Welton. I know you can't hear me right now, but... Well, sometimes that's how these games go. Oh, Absolutely. Then you go have a beer I'm with your, the, your opponent, chuckle about it, and have a good time. I'm the king of trying to take the assassination way too early and overextending the crap out of myself. Oh, yeah. I'm always like, Ed, you can't top of one assassinate. You're like, I don't care. I'm charging you. We haven't played in a long time, actually. We have not. So we've got, we've got, got a run from Nail? Yep. Looks like it. Because I believe he's going to try and blow Nail up and have that Nail Bomb go off and remove all the focus from Epic Fiora. <clears throat> the actual name of the ability is Arcane Annihilation. However, <laughs> that's only triggered by an enemy attack. So I guess he's not going for the assassination right now. He's going to set up for the following turn. Could be. Andy. 
Andy debating what he wants to do next to avoid any weird shenanigans. I appreciate Andy His leaving word. a forest in the forest template so that the deforestation of the Iron Kingdoms isn't fully complete this game. First game where we've seen it. Uh, and it, from, from the perspective of the, of the camera, it can also be a little deceiving at times on what's a hill and what's a forest if you aren't paying attention early in the game to yeah. remember what's what. It's true. <clears throat> you should make better forests than hell. The Mage Henner assassin is running around. Now, the, this terrain was done by our own Stuart Spengler and oh. Michael Archer, and they've done a spectacular job. I would love to see what this terrain would look like if you made it Will Hungerford. It'd be like some... It'd be duct tape and paper. Yeah, it'd be like the worst origami you've ever seen. No, Mike Archer <laughs> and Stuart Spengler are amazing. I said you need to make better terrain. I love you, Ed Burrell. I want I you to know that. I love me too, Will Hungerford. Mm. But everybody knows that. Mm. <clears throat> if anyone on the live stream right now thinks that Ed and I maybe actually hate each other, just know that we've known each other for how long now? How long We, we were playing War Machine back before either of us worked at Privateer Press back in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ten or eleven years. Yeah, so we're just, uh, we've been taking shots at each other for a long time. Board games, war games, RPGs. Everything. Everything. These battle mages running. <coughs> Just fearless, man. They don't care. Like, Judicator? Pff, whatever. Magic robot immune to our attacks? Pff, whatever. I'm going to punch it. So Arcanist walks up. He's going to power boost that phoenix. That flaming phoenix. Just running into a little bit of cover there. Yep. You know, Phoenix doesn't have Pathfinder or anything like that, but Ron does have telekinesis. And telekinesis says that you can never be sure where anything's going to be at any given time. So being behind that wall doesn't mean that it ne can't necessarily charge next turn, depending on what he's trying to get to. God, Phoenix looks awesome, too. It's a, it is a really nice color scheme, actually. I've been working on a red army as well that's very similar gray and orange, but my gray is just a quite a bit lighter. Like oh, cool. Almost like a blue blue orange are you going gray primary and then like orange detail or yes so orange uh, the blades on weapons are orange and then the glow is orange so they look sort of like the, these internally heated right. power weapons it's that's awesome um it looks very sci-fi it's it's a lot of fun <coughs> so uh discordia is gonna throw out a spray yep she got that 10 inch spray man looks like she caught the front too So he's looking for sevens to hit against that Def 13. So targeting one of the guys. Let's see what he's got. Yep, that's a miss on the first one. He's going to go ahead and boost the attack on the other one. Let's we'll see if he kills her. So Temple Flame Guard just got his head obliterated by the Sonic Pulse Cannon. That's the name of that weapon. I just call it the SPC. No, you don't. You're right. So the Reclaimer just picked up a soul there. They were double-checking Soulstorm. Uh, Andy was wanting to know when exactly the damage takes place, which is when you either move within two inches of the Reclaimer or in your activation within two inches of the Reclaimer. When he has a soul on him, which he does. Oh, I love, the, I love this from Andy. He's just like, here's my bros. Deal with it. So Andy is going to mark, use, using corrosion tokens, but he's going to mark the difference between the units because they are so similar just for, just for, just for clarity um, that he can show where those units are separating. Yeah, because his paint job is almost identical. It actually may just be identical on right. the two of them. So he just wants to make sure his opponent doesn't get confused because he decided to run all the battle mages kind of together. Yep. Like it's time for Ron to activate, replacing yep. some some forest. Ron, I imagine, is behind that wall immediately, right? There's, there's, where else is he gonna go? He's not gonna run forward. <clears throat> Fury would obliterate him. 
If he goes too close forward, he's got fire step plus escort and movement. Just madness. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, he's not, not going behind the wall. He's yeah. lining mm -hmm. up behind that Phoenix. See, with Escort, you know, she doesn't get the bonus movement, but the Jacks do. A fire Step lets her teleport up a little bit as well. So they've, they've got a, you know, her and her Jacks kind of in the, the placement they're at. Have pretty comparable threat ranges to e the, each other right now. Just got a little bit further probably. So we'll see where he goes. Oh, looks like he, he backed up. He's going to start casting some spells. Uh, we do have... Kill box on this scenario, so he's gonna have to watch how far back he goes. We do. So what he did is he uh, he just arced, looks like chain blast through the phoenix, the flaming phoenix, targeting Gorman to Sea Wolf, and it drifted. Just resolving Chain Blast right now. You know, the House Shield Battle Mages have Force Barrier, so they don't care at all about these AoEs. They can't right. take damage from them. They're immune. Yep, and that also drifted onto the Judicator, which it's going to do nothing. Yeah. So uh, Michael is upkeeping escort. Yep. Asking about the uh, damage output on that Mage Hunter Assassin. Which is <coughs> high. Yes. Weapon Master, PAL-9. Decapitation, though. Yep. Decapitation's yep. all that matters. <laughs> Those of you that aren't familiar, decapitation basically doubles the amount of damage you take beyond what their armor is. So if you'd normally do two points, you do four. If you normally do 32, you do 64. No, if you're doing That's 32, why the butcher doesn't have decapitation. That's true. That was true. What did he have in Mark 1? <laughs> remember that ability? He had, he had some ridiculous thing that made him do like, I can't even remember what it was. It's been, it's been so long. Doesn't matter anymore. It's irrelevant. We had a lot of fun in those days. Oh, we did. I don't think Andy killboxed himself. I'm certain he forgot about killbox. <laughs> but I don't think he killboxed himself. Um, So T the temple oh, you go ahead. TFG um, shield wall and iron zeal. Yep. Thank you so much. <clears throat> oh, and Andy just is checking the kill box. He he is good to go. Um, so iron zeal, in case anybody doesn't remember, once per game during the unit's activation, the models can use iron zeal for one round. While in formation, models gain plus four armor and can't become stationary or knocked down. So it's real good. Super, super high armor right now between Shield Wall and Iron Zeal. Yep. And they're looking at an arm of 21. Mike is being very precise with his measurement, which is awesome. You know, we even though this is we, we're saying like this is an Iron Arena exhibition game, it's a very casual game. Doesn't mean that means sloppy play. That's right. Doesn't mean that it's a you know that anything like that. You know, every game of War Machine, you play the best of your ability, play as clean as you can, give your opponent a great game, and we're seeing that happen right now. Yep. So some attacks on Nail. Andy being a gentleman and saying, do you know what Nail does when he announced the attack on Nail? Mm -hmm. 
Mike knows what Nail does, and he's going to uh, he's going to punch Nail right in his stupid face. That's a perfect example of why I really love our community. This is not a competitive game. This is a friendly game, doing some learning, and for Andy to say, hey, before you do this, you're aware, you know, are right. you aware this is what Nail does? Um, and and he, he loses the focus. And, you know, maybe Michael didn't quite know, but he also decided not to take his move back. But yeah. Right, right. I, I, you know, I, I have to imagine... Mike probably forgot in the beginning during the focus allocation because otherwise, why are you giving the three to the vanquisher? But no, no big deal, right? He 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 remembered after Andy brought it up. Gotchas are stupid. Yes, it, it's that's that's not how you want to win the game, right? It's and, and not how I want to play a game. Like, yeah. if I forget, but I knew about it, that's on me. But if I didn't know about it, that's different. Mike saying, you got to die, and looking over that Mage Hunter assassin. Yep, just to reprioritize uh, Fiora here. Yep, so Fiora walks up after Nail blows all her focus off, unfortunately. Fiora needs an eight to make this land, and, and it lands. That assassin's about to split in half. Plus two on the dice, yeah. Yeah, just take 12. There she goes. Take 12. You got, you got 12 boxes, right? Oh, no, you got five. I'll see you in hell. Choir's walking up and is going to do the battle hymn. Battle hymn on the jacks. This is awesome. <coughs> Plus two on the attack and damage rolls. Oh, man. There's some nasty sprays about to happen. And next time we go to the overhead, and no rush, but next time we go to the overhead, use your fancy drawing powers. And let me know if you see some awesome spray lines that that Judicator can get from, so, based on where it walks up to. I mean, there's, I, there's an obvious one right there, right? Yeah, I mean, he's got some good vectors. Right there. I wonder, I wonder if he stands there if he's got a second one. We'll see. He could certainly spray out um, to his left. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. <clears throat> Maybe Andy didn't give him any really great options, but there's a couple. There's a couple possibilities. All right, so it looks like the Vanquisher walked up, shot at Discordia, took a bunch off the shield, yep, and set Discordia on fire, fire. Burn. All right, so it looks like Orin midwinter. I believe he moved up and just stealthed. The Reclaimer's walking over. Going to give the soul to the Judicator, and he's like, yes, you took all my focus away, but we still have more. It's hard to tell him. Orin, Orin may have not activated. We'll find out for sure in a second. I looked away from the screen for a second, and I wasn't sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he'd moved him or if they were clarifying. Boom. Are you, are you just yelling boom and drawing things? I'm trying. Why isn't this clearing? You, Tony. What, what are you doing, Ed? I'm pushing the button to clear the drawing, and it's not working. There we go. I had clicked off the screen. Thank you, Tony. Tech support. <laughs> it would have been funny if you couldn't figure it out, and you just... Kept drawing on the screen. It just got worse. It's on the way. I can see the live stream anymore. Big scribble. Just looks like a can of, of spray cheese went off. All right. So the Judicator walks up and he's like, hey, bros, fire rockets. So 
So the first missile deviates to a direction of Andy's choice, but the distance sold di random. Went, didn't really hit anything. Then the secondary blast, again, Andy just chooses away. And it goes six inches, doesn't hit anything. Second missile's going towards Discordia. Let's see if Discordia gets tagged by a fire rocket right in its stupid face. He's got a defense of 12. He's looking for a 9. He's going to boost he a hit on Discordia, meaning a 9. <coughs> Mike being a gentleman and checking range. Hiya! Boom. Direct hit. Do you also yell hi ya when you roll your dice? No. I do that all the time. I'm sure you're not surprised. So we're looking at a PAL 16 hit uh, with the uh, battle hem up. So three to the three on Discordia. Yep. And then they have to de de they have to determine the secondary like missile. Yep. Look, looks like more shield damage to Discordia. Correct. Um, Andy's saying this is going to the two. Goes one inch. Just Discordia is still burning to the ground. Yeah. They're rolling damage on the last. last damage. Yep. Nope. Uh, I love when players use big, big clear dice like that where the pips are clearly visible. Makes uh, commentating so easy. Yeah, it certainly does. And they just have to not roll them under the timer bar. I have a question I have to ask you. Uh, it's kind of in regards to yesterday's uh, commentary I did with Will Schick, and we had an argument. Top Gun or Fraggle Rock? It's super important. Top Gun or Fraggle Rock? Top Which Gun. One? Man, you're just a, just a disappointment. When's the last time you watched Fraggle Rock? I bought my wife the big anniversary box. Have you seen that thing? It's every episode ever. So when did I watch Fraggle Rock? Like two weeks ago. Don't, 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 so, two battle mages thought they were okay, but nope. 20 story robot with flamethrowers. Here you go. The lack of focus is uh, making, proving them tough to hit. Yeah. Yep. No, I mean, there are 15s against ranged attacks. Gorman so. the Seawolf. Gorman. And he is tossing an acid bomb over at that other mage hunter assassin. Oh. Old crazy alchemist Gorman DeWolf throwing out acid bomb at the mage hunter. So he rolls, he misses. It's going to deviate until Clipper, though. So they've just determined that no matter what the deviation is, because the half the distance to the target rule, it's going to hit automatic. Or it's yep. gonna, she's going to be clipped. And she just takes a PAL-12, no matter what. Yep. Those acid bombs are nasty. Gorman has always been a pain for people to deal with since the beginning. It's, uh, uh, so... Little mistake on their part. They're, they're saying it's blast damage, but acid bomb is just straight take a pal twelve. So that that mage hunter is supposed to be dead, but that's okay. No big deal. Like we said, you know, little things like this are going to happen sometimes. Uh, looks like everything I say on this this stream is somehow getting to Andy, and they're double checking the damage on Acid Bomb. So, Andy, Andy just double checked War Room. It got confirmed, and 
Mage Hunter is dead. And we saw Andy pull his, his iPhone out before that even got mentioned, I think. Like, I think he was like, wait, is something, something off here? We don't need judges for live streams ever again. I'll just do it through commentary. They'll be like, can you check this LOS? I'm like, yeah, sure, it looks fine. Is this in this in the range? Sure, I don't care. <coughs> so that was a fire roll on Discordia. Didn't even get to check to see if it went out because it uh, looks like Discordia is within 12 inches of Epic Fiora, and she has Caustic Presence Fire. Nasty stuff. Fire just doesn't want to go out in her control area. No, no. It, it's a real pain in, in her house when like somebody lights the fireplace and they just want to put it out at the end of the night and Fiora's sleeping and then it won't go out. And, you know, they're like, hey, wake up. Can you stop doing that? And she's snoring and then she flame steps in her sleep because she's sleep casting and then everyone's dead and then that's all on fire. Like, Fiora's a horrible person to have around you. So are you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have we ever showed what she looks like under that mask? <laughs> we have not. We showed Krios. <laughs> we showed Krios. I was that was not under Fio Fiora's is she mask. All, is she all like Freddy Krueger burnt up? Probably. You're the creative director. You know this. You just make it up right now and make it canon. I'm going to leave everybody hanging. Oh, okay. She does sleep cast, though, and she does set everything on fire, so that's real life. Mike is going in the tank. What am I going to do? You can see him already. He's, he's thinking, patting his hands. It's Andy's turn, but I can see Mike just sitting there thinking, like, man, what's going to happen next? We'll see. Those Temple Flame Guard are a pretty heavy-duty defensive wall right now. but Or maybe I'm misreading Mike. Maybe he's not in the tank over his next turn already. Maybe he's just watching to see what Andy does and then get ready. And he seems like he's got a plan of that, his plan of action ready, though, and he's getting ready. You see Matt Getz back there running the Unleashed Adventure? He's being all animated. That's our Matt Getz. Look at, look at him. Pot, pot. What am I pointing at? What are we saying right now? Epic Fiora is a horrible roommate. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> so power booster on the Phoenix. Andy's turn has begun. Looks like he only allocated one out to Discordia. Or maybe I missed a power booster from no, another I Arcanist. Believe it was a double power booster. Double power booster. Oh, Andy put the other tree back, the one he removed. He did. Yeah. Andy's awesome. Did Eris walk back and shoot at one of her own battle mages? I, I mean, he missed. Yeah. But, okay. I Let's see what Andy's got up his sleeve. So Andy's <laughs> walking with the Discordia over to the battle mage. And attacking it. Just, <laughs> he's going to kill his own <laughs> battle mage. No. Nah. I, I'm interested to see what Andy's plan is. So looks like Andy boosted the attack roll hit, and then the damage just murders it. All right, Andy Welton, surprise me. What you got? Fascinating tactics here. There's been a lot. Almost every game we've live streamed, somebody's jack has walked up and just punched one of their own troopers in the back of the head. War jacks are jerks. The Phoenix is running. Okay, Phoenix is running. Getting ready to kill another of his own troopers, apparently. Oh, what's he going? No, on? not with a run. He's running. I sense an assassination run. <clears throat> Phoenix run. Oh, God. All right, so Ron's activating. Menoth. Thank you. He's walking up his five inches. I assume feet is... There's the feet. And he's got some kind of token for feet, I'm certain. Pacha. See that upkeep spell feet? It's good. He's telekinesis assisting. 
targeting him. I don't know what that means, Andy. <clears throat> so he has successfully telekinesis. Telekinesi. The Vanquisher. Ron's casting TK. <clears throat> One more time. Man. TK. It's a real bad spell. So Ron, he TK'd the Vanquisher out of the way. Now he's TKing Epic Fiora. He has hit, and he's figuring out where he's going to move. And you hear Andy saying, all right, what's the range on Escort? How close does she have to be to the Jax to get the bonus armor? So he moves her closer to the jack and then turns around. I think there was no real way for him to avoid uh, Epic Fjord getting within three inches. Right. They're right. clarifying so. the timing on the Backstrike rules? Yeah, they're just talking about is a backstrike when you start your activation, you have the backstrike, or is it the start of the sort of the entire round? And Andy just talking to Mike about it. <laughs> so looks like Ron, after casting the two Ks, two TKs is now throwing out the uh, a chain blast here. And did no damage to Fiora. Her, her armor's just a little too high. So he's checking on the AoEs from Chain Blast, though. The secondary blast from the Chain Blast just goes straight back towards the Arc Node that cast it. And it does literally nothing. Ron's rocking one. I'm just going to sit on that one focus and... Save it for a rainy day, you know. <laughs> so it's Battle Mage activation time. Let's Magic Fiora in her back, pull her all the way across the field, and then probably have one of the Mage Hunters, if there's one still back there, charge her in her face and kill her. We'll see, though. He has no Mage Hunter Assassins left. Both, uh, both it, have been killed. Why is, where's Eris 2, though? Oh, that's right. Eris 2 moved over and shot at one of the Battle Mages to kill mm -hmm. him. I was like, it's, it, I forgot she activated already. It is up to the Battle Mages to pull this off. That seems unlikely. But maybe not. She's just armor really... I mean, once he pulls her away from the jack, the armor drops pretty drastically. We'll see. Now they've got extra range on their... Uh, plus two for non-channeled spells. Yep. Plus two on their range. We'll see. Let's see what happens here. So this is dice minus nine on this first hit. Does no damage. And they are boosted again because of feet. Yep. All boosted. Andy forgot to pull on the first one. It does crit, so it's going to knock down. This one he is pulling her in. Okay, so he pulls her one inch. So he just forgot to do the pull on the first one one inch. Well, he, they, that would have brought her kind of toward the jack from that first one. So he might not have yeah. wanted to drag her in that direction. So the second damage roll still does nothing at dice minus nine. The third battle mage is going to hit her. He's going to pull Fiora closer to him three inches. And you're going to see this little, this little daisy chain is about to happen. Hey, why don't you start a line of where Fiora started? On, on the telestration, like a little circle, okay? And let's just let's just trace her path. Well, Fiora started here. No, God. And then she went over here. You're making this. She's getting drugged this way. Okay. I don't need the beginning, but thanks. All right, let's go. We're just gonna follow her along. Well, and honestly, there was some TKing over here, and she got put over here. You're making it worse. You're making it worse. 
You are. Oh. You know what? Stop telestrating, please. No. It has been quite the journal journey. So she's basically been brought over here to the Phoenix's base. Yep. Now she's outside of the three inches for escort, so it goes down to dice minus seven on the damage roll here. And, and he gets a off. She takes three damage. A little bit of damage here. I think we are going to see an assassination here. Crit knockdown, super nice. Oof. That's over. Damage, and there it is. Well, congrats to Andy Welton for uh, magicking Fiora right in the face, dragging her across the battlefield and blowing her up. Yeah, I would like to thank both of our opponents, Andy and Michael, for a, a, a good, well-played game. Um, you know, a lot of <coughs> a lot of uh, a learning, a few little hiccups. Um, I think pretty typical of a uh, casual play uh, experience. Yeah, they had a good time, man. That's right. You know, they had a good time. They just talked about everything. You can hear them laughing and, and just joking and most importantly, very open communication. And right now, they're having the after battle chat and just being like, oh, here's what happened. Here's what we could have done. Here's what, you know, some different tactics. But, uh, so, oh. again, we've got uh, Andy Welton with the, the um, assassination on <laughs> uh, Fiora 2. Um, I'm Ed Burrell, and this is Will Hungerford. Thank you guys for joining us here at uh, here at um, Lock and Load 2015. And we're going to be back with and another one of these, right? Yeah, I think in about, looks like in about an hour. Excellent. We'll be back with one more, uh, what are we calling these guys? The Iron Exhibition. Iron Exhibition. So if you want to watch more of these uh, uh, casual play games, be back, and uh, we'll keep being ridiculous. We'll see you soon. Thanks.